right, so we're here in Oaxaca. It is Saturday, April 23rd, and we had a great time in Centro last night. It's one of my regrets is when I come to Oaxaca, I go out to the Palenques and I don't get to, you know, spend a lot of time in this cool Centro area, but we did it last night. And the truth of the matter is, I'd rather be in the Palenques mostly, and that's where we're headed now. So it's all about the hunt for me. It's what makes it so exciting, you know? You never know what you're gonna find when you go into the Palenques, but I have always found something really amazing. Here's some kind of good news is, we're starting off going to my friend Placido Hernandez. His, uh, his uh, Palenque is called Espina Dorada, and uh, I've known Placido for quite a few years now, and I've already bought this Tepestate from him. It's an amazing Tepestate. It's interesting because it's really full flavored green Tepestate flavor, and yet at the same time, it is a little bit on the soft side, which is kind of nice. I don't really need it to be soft, but it's kind of nice when it is and still full flavored. And he'll take us around. He's a really engaging, fun guy. Then we're going to head out to San Baltazar de la Vila and go to the Palenque that was the first Palenque that I was ever at when I came to uh, Mexico, came to Oaxaca years ago. We're going to meet Daniel and Cosme Hernandez Jr. And uh, then we're going to, we're going to, hang around there maybe in San Dionisio Cotepec, which is the region, go see Helacio and uh, Ulises Garcia. And then we're gonna go see Juan, who made some of the most amazing mezcal I've ever had. He calls it a Del Monte. I never heard of that. I hope he's got some of this. Um, he tells me that it's, it's like a wild espadine, but I don't understand why it would taste so different from any other espadine I've ever had. It almost has the, the flavor of romero, which is rosemary, something like that. It's really herbal and gorgeous. Uh, and he also made an, another amazing tepestate, which is probably my desert island mezcal. So we're probably gonna have some, some great tepestate today. And uh, oh my God, Helacio makes the most amazing capon. I have some Capone in my mochila right now, but we're going to see if he's got some more. I think he told me he did have some more. He also makes one of the best Espadines I've ever had. Tomorrow, the plan is to go see Mohan, who is just about my favorite mescalero at this point. I went and saw him maybe six or seven years ago, I think. He lives out in the Miohuatlan Valley, and uh, the area is called, uh, like, Logoche, and uh, he makes the best Madre Quiches and Bee Quiches that I have ever had. His Espadines are good. He made a Tobala a few years ago that blew my mind. It was different than any Tobala I'd ever had. It almost had this slight little essence of blue cheese, just a little bit, you know? Um, so we're gonna go see him. And then on Monday, I'm not really sure, we might go back east uh, to the San Dionisio Cotepec area, or maybe we'll find some new places. Um, we've got our guide here and he's got some suggestions for us. So. Uh, we're gonna roll up our sleeves. We're gonna head out into the campo with these people who make amazing mezcal like they've done it for generations, the artisanal way. And I can't wait to see what we find. Hola. Placido, está aquí? Hey, Placido, como estas? Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> All right. So over here is what they call the molida. They use this tajon. It's pulled by a horse. It crushes the roasted agave. And uh, that's how you get it to release all those beautiful things that are fermented and then distilled. So do you use, do you always use a horse or do you sometimes use a burro or? No, horse. Always a horse, yeah. right. This is a very heavy stone. <laughs> so this is the Orno, is the orno. And, and they've already got it packed with espadín piñas. And uh, so when are you gonna do the cook? Five days. All right. Well, we'll have to try that next time we come. Yeah. All right. Wow, still, still more stuff every time I come and it's only been two months. Look at all this. You wanna watch the, for the perlas, yes. the pearls, the bubbles. 55. Really? Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> give me this stuff. So this is Espadín, Mexicano, and Quiche. Yeah. Oh, smell is heaven. Yeah. Oh, oh. 
This is gold, Placido. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So earthy, man. So earthy. Uh, really full flavored. In fact, some of my friends think I need the grado a little too high. I could bring this down a little bit. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm, mmm, mmm. Just delicious. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. You know what I like? It's people yeah. like you who promote mezcal. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's what we love, mm. what we have here in our heart. Mm. And, you know, it makes us happy. Right. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Nich Beo. Nich Beo. Mmm. Wow, this is great. So, you know, you never know when a palenque is going to be cooking. So we were passing by this palenque on our way to San Baltazar, and we happened to see a cook going on here. So we asked them for permission. Could we get a little video on this? So let's check it out. Well, okay, so they haven't actually put the piñas on yet. So this is what they do. They get the fire hot and they put the rocks in there because if the fire touches the, the agave, it'll burn. It'll create off flavors that you don't want. So they put the rocks in, they get it nice and hot, and then they stack the piñas in there. And, <laughs> and then they cover it all up with dirt. Sometimes they even cover it up with like a, a tarp, like a big blanket or something, just to keep all the smoke in there. Wow, this is pretty intense. <laughs> So we've got the rocks in here, the fire started in there. What they're gonna be doing is stacking the piñas. These are all espadine right here. So they've already chopped them up, it looks like basically into quarters. And they'll be stacking them on top of there, but ordinarily they will use this, let's see, bagasso. It's like the spent agave fiber, fiber. And they sort of spread it over that just as a little extra insurance normally so that the piñas don't, uh, don't burn. So here we are at the uh, Palanque of Miguel Garcia. And as you can see, the Molita is in operation right now. That's called a tajona. The horse pulls this enormous stone wheel. And the whole idea is that these agave piñas have been cooked and now they need to be crushed to release all the beauty. And so that's exactly what's happening here. You see the young man is pushing all of the stuff that still needs to be crushed in the way of the wheel as the horse goes around. They give the horse little breaks here and there, but that's how it gets crushed. And then after that, they go into these tinas or these tubs. Uh, and this is where the fermentation begins. And it ferments as long as it needs to. It might take long sometimes because of the weather or just the yeasts aren't in the air. We got some pretty serious fermentation going on. So as you can see here in the tina, you see that this, this is espadine that is in the process of fermenting. This will ferment for a while. It builds this cap on it. Usually they'll have to like, you know, get in there and mix it around just to make sure, you know, it's, uh, it's all getting incorporated well. And then after this, that is the process when they go ahead and do the distillation, just to kind of refine the alcohol that's in there. And it looks like Miguel has four stills here, so he's got quite an operation. And we tasted some of his espadine, it's delicious. Miguel was just telling us that he spent a couple of years in the U.S. to get the money necessary to do everything here. And they just sold their first lote of mezcal to someone in California, and this is their brand. Buen Estrella, good star. So congratulations on getting his operation off the ground. <laughs> Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. That is a beautiful, classic Oaxacan espadine. 49 grados, 49% ABV. It's delicious. And this is the maestro Miguel Garcia. Mucho gusto, senor. Gracias. Mmm. 
So, we're just getting into San Baltazar de la Vila. We are going to the first Palenque that I ever was at, and this was a little over seven years ago, as I recall. Uh, there's someone who's kind of a fixture in the Mezcal world named Cosme Hernandez, but he's got a few different Palenques run by his various sons. We're going to go to the Palenque of Daniel y Cosme Jr. And uh, they say they remember me, they're expecting us, and I'm very much looking forward to tasting their stuff. I have a friend who told me they've been hanging on to some really beautiful stuff that they've been aging, so I'm eager to try that. Well, clearly they have upgraded. Either this is the same site, but it just looks different than I remember it, or they've moved, oh no, this is it. Look at this, they've just really built it up. Yeah, wow. This was my first Palenque. It's great to be here again. Hola, como estas? <laughs> okay, so we're here with uh, Cosme, Cosme Hernandez, and I can't wait to try his mezcal because it's awesome. He and his brother Daniel. Cinco generaciones de mezcal. Oh, cinco generaciones, sí. five generations, fantastic. Okay. Ah, Daniel, como estas? Bien, bien. Muy bien, muy bien. bien. Good eh? to see you. Good to see you again. So this is Daniel, the, the hermano de Cosme. Muy diferente. It's hermoso. Ya está yeah. quedando poco sí, a poco. Sí, ¿Sí? poco Ahí a poco. Vamos. Sí. So, ¿qué tienes? Pues tenemos, eh, a la... estamos destilando. Estamos... Aquí van a ver el proceso de la molienda, uh -huh. la destilación. Estamos haciendo eh, destilación de tepache. Oh, yeah, the tepache, si. Sí. Estamos obteniendo ordinario. Si, sí, si, sí. sí. perfecto, perfecto. Ok, so. Pásele. This is the corazón of a roasted maguey, espadín, see? Espadín. Oh my God, it's so good. The outer layer is also delicious, but there's a lot of fiber in it, and this one is just really just beautiful. It's sweet, has a taste like molasses, I think. Mmm, delicious, it's like candy. <laughs> So standing here again with Daniel Hernandez, and uh, he's letting us try his latest Espadín. It's really beautiful. It's got a 48% uh, ABV. And yet, there's just no astringency whatsoever. It's got such a beautiful flavor. Obviously, he knows what he's doing here. He's got this enormous, I mean, you could call this a garrafón, I guess you'd call it a tinaco, but it's 5,000 liters, which I think is the largest one I've ever seen. <laughs> but he's nice enough to uh, let us give it a try here, and it's absolutely magnificent, especially after I ate that little bit of the heart of roasted agave. It just really is beautiful together, you know? Mm. So one of the one of my sort of frustrations is, you know, the the just to me the Oaxacan mezcales are just the best, just the best. Up in some areas of Mexico near where we live, they have salmiana, and I have had some really good salmiana sometimes, but I just don't think it can compare to the variety and the beauty of some of the Oaxacan agaves. They're not just grown in Oaxaca, like Puebla and Guerrero. There are some places there that grow the same things, but we can't, re I've tried to grow some of the espadín from Oaxaca in San Miguel de Allende in Guanajuato. They just don't look healthy. I don't think they're designed. It's a little cooler in San Miguel, but uh, what I'm going to try to do is see if Daniel and, and Cosme can give me some little huelos, little babies of some of these things, and I'm going to try to grow them in San Miguel and just see if they work out. You know? que vive en mí. No sé si pueda vivir 
morir así No sé si pueda So, we've had a great time with Daniel and Cosme. I love this jabalí. Uh, we've got other palenques to go to, and I'm eager to taste what they have. So, we're just now leaving the palenque of Daniel and Cosme Hernandez, and what a great time. You know, they were so inviting. I really appreciate the way they really were happy to be there. I really just wish my Spanish was better. I could understand about 30% of everything they were saying, and I could connect the dots, you know? But uh, anyway, they were so nice to me because they remember me from coming here years ago. And the thing that I remember the most about them, the first mezcal that I was ever shared was a coyote. And they call it, that's the, that's the mezcal de la casa at their palenque, at their house. And oh, it's beautiful. And I bought a, a lot of habali from them, so they gave us some gifts. We, they filled up a few of our little plastic bottles with some coyote. And oh, will I savor that when I get back to San Miguel. I cannot wait. De la Sierra Morena, cielito lindo, viene en baja. So our driver has recommended another palenque. I'm not familiar with this place. But uh, we're still in San Baltazar de la Vila, and I understand he makes really, really amazing mezcal, so why would we not stop here? <laughs> Hola, señor. Buenas tardes. ¿Cuál es su nombre? Constantino Cruz. ¿Cuál? Constantino Cruz. Constantino Cruz. Oh, bueno, ok. So he, he's the owner of the... Oh, okay. Tu nombre, señor? Salomón Salvador Cruz. Salomón Salvador Cruz. Mucho gusto. I see some stuff, some uh, distillation with... ¿Qué es eso? Nanche. Nanche? Fruta. Ah. Eh, son frutas de temporada. Sí. Okay. Solo un poco. De besito. De besito. Besitos. Flor de cacao, pero Flor de cacao. Sí, entiendo, entiendo. Flor de cacao. Okay, so I don't know what this is. I don't know what a, a cacao flower is. Mm. Mm. Muy diferente. It's very different. It, I, I'm getting kind of a flavor of, of reposado, which where it's been in, in madera and wood for a while. But there's something else in here. It's not all it is. Mm. Well, they're telling me this is an espadín con fresa. Fresa is, is a strawberry. Um, so, was it destilado con fresas? Primero, las dos primeras destilaciones, uh -huh. sacamos el mezcal, se vuelve a meter al alambique ah. con fresa. Mm. Oh, it tastes like espadín. I get it, just a little note of sweetness, just a little note of fresa, of strawberry. Mm. 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 That's nice. Gracias. Mm. 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 More strawberry. More, más fresa on the second and third sip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit less a flavor and a little bit more uh, a character. Yeah, there's a sweet strawberry thing that, that comes up. Yeah, it's very nice. Gracias. Cuiche. Cuiche. So, madre cuiche, bi cuiche, cuiche. What is... Uh, madre cuiche y el cuiche de barril. Mmm, very pleasant, very pleasant. This is quite soft. What is el grado? Acordón cerrado. No. Como 52. 52? No manches. This is surprising. If this is 52, it's very difficult to imagine that. Wow. The young man is pouring me an espadín. We're going to give this a go. I like to look at the cruz. This reminds me 
that life is too short to drink bad mezcal. We have to come to the palenques and drink the good mezcal. Mm. Oh my God, that's really soft. What the hell, how do they make it so soft here? This is a really lovely mezcal. I don't understand exactly what they do here. It, uh, I mean, all of the mezcales that they have had, they tell me they're about 50 or above as far as the grado, the, the, the ABV, but they're all really soft, you know? They just don't have the astringency that most would be at 50 or above. So it's really nice, it's an espadín. And I'm really surprised at, at how soft it is for the, the strong grado, you know? Really, really beautiful flavor, though. Really beautiful flavor, wow. Well, what time is it, Alex? It's about 2.30. 2.30? It's early. And yet, I'm wildly smashed. Um, we're gonna go see these bulls over here. These toros. Look at him. Both of them, look at that one toro has like a corona. She's got like a crown around her head. It's like a purple crown. And it looks like they, they have a hide over there. Oh my God, it was an amazing day. I can't believe it's only 2.30. But we have had so many distillations, so many copitas, so many samples. It's probably better that we head back to the hotel. <laughs> oh, but we got some good, uh, we found some good shit today, as we always do. It's not all amazing to my palate, but some of it is incredible, and I'm so grateful to have found it. Yeah. So, day two, we are already in the Miahuatlan Valley. It's a little bit further out than most of the places that we typically go, but we're going to see Mohen, Hermógenes Vázquez García. He's one of my favorite mezcaleros, he lives in the land of quiches, and uh, not for nothing, his quiches are just absolutely phenomenal tasting. And uh, so I was out here, the last time I was here was six years ago, and uh, we met a number of his neighbors. I'm hoping they're gonna be available today as well. There's uh, Celso and Don Tomas, and there are others in the region. So I'm told by my friend Max that everybody's in operation right now. They're at full tilt. And so uh, hopefully we can watch them cooking and, and uh, distilling. I would really love to see that, but I cannot wait to see Mohan. He's uh, aware that we're coming. Looks like we're gonna be a little bit earlier here, but uh, he says that's okay. Anyway, I'm eager to try his stuff. So it's really great to be back here. I mean, why? Is it because of this patch of land? I don't know, maybe. It's great to be back here because this is some of the best mezcal that I've ever had in my life. And Mohan and his wife, Paula, who are partners in this operation, they know what they're doing. And I really love the beautiful, full-flavored mezcals that they create here. You know, um, I was told at one point, actually since 2010, Mohan stopped using a tajona to crush the agaves. And as you can see over here, it, he got uh, a shredder. And uh, that's what he's used. I remember asking him six years ago when I was here, can you tell a difference in the flavor? And he said, yeah. But he apparently didn't think that it was substantive enough to, uh, to say, I can't do that, you know. I believe using a shredder might possibly be one improvement, you know, to a very labor-intensive process that is making artesanal mezcal. So I don't blame him at all for doing it, and I certainly can't tell any difference. So um, he's, he's pulled out four different years of his Madre Quiche, and I'm tasting them all. And uh, he's got some more stuff for us. I think he brought out the penca larga and maybe some other stuff. So let's go try that. He's got, uh, he's got a penca larga. I've had this before. Now, our friend Max Rosenstock had sent me samples of this and I bought some of it. He at that time told me he thought it was an unidentified species of maguey. But then recently he told me it's not even a maguey. It's a, another type of plant that they commonly make liquor or spirits out of in South America. But whatever it is, I, I gotta, ah yeah, ah. For me, it has a aroma of 
roasted peanuts, like cacahuates, un poco en, en, en mi nariz. Como raíz. Raíz, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really amazing. It doesn't taste like any other mezcal I've ever had. It's really beautiful. Penca larga. So what do we have now? Jabalí? Sí. Oh, my God, jabalí. <laughs> oh, look at the perlas. Oh, okay, let's see. Jabalí. Oh, this is good. This might, have, this might be better than the one I had yesterday. It's, it's, it's got all the flavor. But it's quite, it's still pretty soft. I'm finding a lot of those recently. Uh, ¿Cuál es el grado, Mohen? Está como 49 grados. 40, 40, 49, okay, perfecto. So 49%. Oh, this is really good. This is a beautiful abali. You gotta try this. Okay, so Mohen also brought us a tepestate, which is one of my absolute favorites of all time. Let's see. Ah, that classic tepestate smell. Very green. Okay, tepestate. Mmm, <sighs> mmm, perfect. Just perfect. I'm getting notes on this tepestate of not only the tepestate, the usual flavors, but a little extra earth in there. Mm. This is absolutely fantastic. I love this. So, I've said for years now that my desert island mezcal is probably a tepestate. Just has such unbelievable flavor. One time I had an araqueño that blew me away. But every now and then, a madre quiche blows everything away that I've ever had. And when I have had, the best madre quiche it is always from Mohen. Um, so he, uh, Paula, his wife, brought me this one. We're going to give this a go here. In fact, I wanted to tell a little story about maybe six months ago. We were at a restaurant in San Miguel de Allende, and somebody had a bottle of Madre Quiche, and I was trying it, and I said, wow, this is really good. This is an amazing quiche. And I looked on the back, Hermógenes Vázquez García. <laughs> he had made it, you know. I had no idea he had anything to do with that brand. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and give this a taste. And I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Yeah, beautiful, earthy aroma. Mmm, oh, it's just gorgeous. Mm. This Mother de Quiche is so beautiful. I would guess this is 47, 48%, something like that. It's just got the beautiful flavor and aroma just of of a palenque out in the campo, you know. Um, it's got earth. You can taste the tierra. You can taste the earth. Um, it's got a really beautiful uh, balance of sweetness, which I love. Um, so apparently this is from 2018, and this one's from 2019. So it's another lote, another batch. Let's check that one out. Those perlas are popping. different and I like this one better at least on my first sip it's got just a little more strength behind it strength not necessarily of alcohol but of flavor I like this one a little bit better than that one but they're both amazing mm. Mm. Mohan's mother de quiche just always lights me up oh it's so gorgeous uh. So it's gonna be a little bumpy here. We're leaving Mohan y Paula's house in Palenque, and we're gonna go see some other, uh, some other mezcaleros in the area here. We had a freaking amazing time at Mohan's, and uh, we're gonna have another amazing time, I think. It's funny, I tell people sometimes, Mezcal changed my life. How could that be that an alcoholic beverage changed my life? I don't really know, it doesn't make sense, it seems silly. But uh, it, it did. It's, uh, it's a remarkable experience drinking it, and it is, uh, 
it's something I'll never get over, you know. I mean, I used to enjoy drinking craft brewed beer, used to enjoy drinking good red wine, you know. Um, but when I got to Mexico and I discovered mezcal, it, it is borderline mind expanding. And uh, the experience of drinking it is extremely enthusiastic. I just love it. We are here still in Logoche, Miahuatlan. We went to Mohen, we went to go see Don Tomas, and now we are here at another palenque very close by, and they're cooking right now, so I thought it would be good to stop by and just talk to them. So they have the, they're distilling. Hola, como estas? Jonathan. Mucho gusto, Elvia. Elvia? Elvia, mucho gusto. So, ¿qué, ¿qué es? Es una postura de, de jabalí. 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 Y cuiche. So, uh, uh, ensamble. Ensamble. Sí. ¿Qué es eso, señor? Tequilana. Tequilana. Okay, so this is what some people call tequila. It's made out of the agave azul, the blue Weber. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Really beautiful. Uh, ¿Cuál es el grado? ¿Sabes? 50. 50. Oh, it's beautiful. Sí, por la perla. Mm, mm. Porque la perla es grande. So this is like tequila the way it used to be for all the hardcore, you know, industrial people moved in. This is delicious. Oye, pero entonces... Mm. John. Sí. Listen, I've enjoyed a little drink or two here. Have you? But at this point... It's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to take a nap but that is what it's all about, take is getting out of hand. So Ramon is going to get us Madre Quiche and some Ensemble. It might be better than anything I've ever had in my life. You never know. It's the hunt. Ah, oh, Madre Quiche. Mm. Mm. Oh, mmm, beautiful, hermoso. It's very earthy. It's very Mohenish. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mmm. Okay, so day three, we are in the vicinity of San Dionisio Ocotepec. Pretty excited about this one. This one, we went to all of the places that I knew for sure that I wanted to go the first two days. But now we're really on the hunt. Let's see what we can find out here. A couple of years ago, I was introduced to a maestro mezcalero named Jose Manuel Mendez, and he had some amazing stuff. He had something he called a Del Monte, and he had a beautiful Tepestate. And uh, I thought, you know, I'd like to look that guy up. So it looks like we're just pulling up right now. I've been communicating with him on WhatsApp and he says, come on down. So here we are. We're going to uh, go to at least a few other places, some of which I don't even, I'm not even familiar with, but I'm excited about it because you never know what you're going to find. Buenos dias. So we've got the Tohona rocking over here. This is where they crush the roasted agave. Jonathan, mucho gusto. Igualmente. We are looking at a bunch of tepestate about to be crushed. Hello. But we're going further into the, uh, into the Palenque. So you can see we're here at uh, Jose Manuel Mendez Palenque and you see all of the agave piñas here. Well right beyond it obviously is the, uh, the Orno, the conical in earth oven where they cook everything. You can see over here this is a huge Araucano. This is one of my favorite agaves. It's very very big. These are espadine. I thought these were biquiche or tobasiche, but he tells me these are madre quiche right here. These smaller round ones here are tobala, and I'm not sure whether he's making a, an ensemble or several batches, I'm not sure. You see the orno here. So at some point, they'll dig this stuff out, they'll build a fire, they'll cover it with rocks, they'll put more of this bagasso, which is the spent agave fiber, so as not to burn the piñas. They'll chop these puppies up and they'll put them in here and cover it with something, usually dirt. Sometimes they'll put like a tarp over top of it uh, and it'll cook for, depending on how long it takes, it could be three or four days, it could be a week. It just depends on when they, 
They say it's done. But uh, he's going to take us in for some tastes now. He's letting me try his tobala. Oh, it smells beautiful. Mmm, boom, boom. That's beautiful. Ooh. ¿Cuál es el grado? Este? 47. 47, okay, yes. so 47%. Mmm, mmm. That's a delicious tobala. I'm getting a really nice uh, foundation to it here. And uh, you know, there's a little bit of a sweetness to it that I like. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very nice. I like this tobala. So this is uh, Tepestate. Tepestate is one of my, I often call it my desert island mezcal. Ooh, good Tepestate aroma. That's it. That's the same stuff I got from him two years ago. It's buenísimo, joven. Yeah. Buenísimo. It's 46? 47 igual. 47, okay. So the thing about Tepestate, some of you probably already know, it's the aroma is beautiful. To me, the flavor just reminds me of something green, you know? Beautiful green plants, you know? I, I really love it. It does, I think, take you a little while to get used to that flavor. Some people don't really like it too much. I love it, though. Mmm. Mmm. Tobala, tepestate y quiche, por favor. It's madre quiche, be quiche. Madre quiche, okay. Madre quiche. Okay, so this is the Madre Quiche. Ah, another nice, beautiful aroma. Mmm, super earthy, really earthy. Mmm. Mm. So yeah, there's this really beautiful, it's the flavor of the soil, I guess. I'm not really sure, it's just, it's got to be. It's, it's got all of this flavors of mineral. Mm. También 47? 47. Oh, that's, that's your... Okay, got you. That's beautiful. Muchas gracias. So we just left the Palenque of Jose Manuel Mendez. He is one of my new favorite mezcaleros. We found some great stuff over there. He had tobala. He had a tepestate that I was familiar with from two years ago, just as beautiful. He explained to us that about 90% of that tepestate lote was made from tepestate capon, which explains why it has a beautiful flavor and yet at the same time, it's kind of on the soft side a little bit. But the winner today for me was his madre quiche. It just had this incredible essence of wet earth. It was just, it had a mineral flavor to it. It was really gorgeous. So, we're still in San Dionisio Cotepec, but we might be a little bit lost, which I guess is all part of the excitement of a mezcal journey. Uh, we are looking for a female mezcalera. Uh, I don't even remember her name. Our driver, Ruben, told us about her. And uh, she apparently has a ranch and she has a home. And her home is not easy to get to, if you were to look down here. So, Ruben, our driver, is headed down there to find her and see if she's welcome to receive us before we all head down there. And uh, we'll see if we can taste something amazing. So we went to the house and it turns out Adela, that's the name of the maestra, she's not there. She's apparently at the Palenque, which is cool because we'd like to see the Palenque anyway. And uh, so we're going to go try some tobala apparently. Jonathan, mucho gusto. Adela. So we're here, and it turns out I know this maestra, that is, I know of her. Her name is Adela. Adela, ¿cuál es su nombre? Adela. Adela del Carmen Cruz Antonio. De Carmen Cruz Antonio. 
And uh, I've seen her videos. She's on the Magay Melate YouTube site. They've done lots of interviews with her. And we had to drive quite a ways out here, so I'm really eager to find out what they have. I understand they've got some great tobala for us, so let's check it out. So we're in the Palenque of Adela. She's shown us the Tajona. She told me something I didn't know before. So they call this the Molida, the stone is the Tajona. This is where they crush the roasted agave. We've seen a lot of that this trip. But she also explained that they always pressure wash with hot water after they use this. And there's a little drain in the side in, uh, through which the uh, dirty water comes through. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought they would have done that, you know. But uh, they've got a great big vat of tobala over here that's fermenting. Cuantos dias? Maestra? Cuatro dias. Cuatro dias, si, perfecto. And you can see she's got a couple of stills over here, copper stills. So, we're about to try some of Adela's distillations. Uh, apparently we've got some Madre Quiche, we've got a cereal to try, and uh, we've got some Espadine and some Tobala, so we're going to uh, see what it tastes like out here. This is a Tepestate. We got a lot of that this trip, and I'm grateful. Mmm, 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 mmm. Very full flavored, super green. Nice, powerful flavors. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh, wowzer. This Madre Quiche is reminding me of Mohen's Madre Quiche quite a bit. The stuff they make out in the Miahuatlan Valley. Got a lot of power. It's 48 grados, and uh, it's really, really delicious. It's full flavor, just like the Tepestate was. So the, the flavor is, I mean, when I say that, full flavored, it might sound like it's super strong. It really isn't. It's not strange for mezcals to be over 50%. This is 48, which is beautiful. You know, it's fine, but it's the flavor really packs a punch, flavor alone. Mm. Mm. Super. Okay. Got a lot of aroma, but that's typical in my experience with Espadine. Oh, muy suave. 48? Ooh, wow. For 48, it's unbelievably soft. I can't figure out what that flavor is. There's a little note in there I'm just not getting. Hmm. But it's really beautiful. It's got a really nice sweetness. Muy dulce. Ah, this is lovely. So. Adela brought me her cereal. This is another Karwinski. I haven't had a cereal in a little while, though. Mm. Gorgeous. That reminds me a lot of the Madre Quiche, since it's also a Karwinski, but... Maybe just a little bit of citrus. It rises up through the middle as you drink it. Really beautiful. Mm. All of hers have really good, strong, full flavors that I like a lot. Mm. So we are leaving the Palenque. It's a beautiful Palenque. I'm not familiar with uh, regions of Oaxaca that have all these oak trees, you know? It doesn't even seem like I'm in Oaxaca in a way. <laughs> Seems like I'm in Tennessee or something. But uh, what a pleasure it was to meet Maestra Adela. Her husband, Angel, was there. And uh, her helper, Hilario, got us down here. It was quite a damn trek down here. But what a lovely, young, beautiful girl. She's 22 years old, and she's making amazing mezcal. Uh, she's got a great story. I'd heard about it before, uh, a series of YouTube videos. But now I've come here and I got to taste all of her mezcals. Every last one of them was amazing. I was especially smitten by both her tepestate. Fortunately, I have so much tepestate right now, but she had a cereal, which was just magnificent. So uh, I, uh, I got a little cereal from her today and I'm looking forward to bringing that back and 
letting my wife and some of my friends taste it. So we're still on the hunt, of course. We are looking for Helacio Garcia Cruz. It's a guy I met last year. I actually met his son, Ulises. And um, we happen to have Senor Hilario with us, who works with Maestra Adela. And he said, oh, yeah, I know where Helacio's Palenque is. And we pull up, and I'm like, this is not the Palenque that I know. He says, yes, this is, this is Helacio Cruz Garcia. And I said, no, my Helacio is Helacio Garcia Cruz. Wow. <laughs> so there's kind of a shortage of, of surnames, I think, in Mexico, or at least it seems that way to me. So we are on our way now to the other Helacio in San Dionisio Cotepec to uh, see what he has for us to taste. So here we are. We did make it to Helacio Garcia Cruz's uh, Palenque. Uh, we think this is probably the last Palenque of the trip, but he's not here. I had messaged him. He said he would be here, but I guess he had to run away for a little while. We called him, and he said he'll be here in 15 minutes, so we're waiting for him to come back. So Helacio and Ulysses couldn't make it. They had another project going on that day. But, you know, a few weeks ago, Ulysses sent me a message. He says, hey, I've got a new Espadine Capone distillation. Can I send you a sample? I said, yes, you can. And it was delicious. And a few of my local friends here and I, we bought some Garafones from him. I really appreciate these maestros. You know, we went to nine different uh, palenques that day, and I checked back and I noticed that, well, at least six of them have kept in contact with me. Ask me how I'm doing, say, hey, we want you to come back, bring your wife, can we send you some samples? You know, one of them even invited us to her birthday celebration, which I thought was cool. So it's neat to be able to think that we can extend these relationships and continue to get to know these people better. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, I had said earlier that the two Espadine pups that Maestro Placido Hernandez had sent me didn't look too healthy here in San Miguel. Well, they turned a corner. They look super healthy now. And that made me think maybe I could plant some other agaves not endemic to my region. And so I got a hold of a quiche pup. That's growing. I've got a cupriata from Guerrero. I've got a few tobala plants from uh, Oaxaca. They seem to be doing very well. And this led me to my next thought. As you can see here, I went ahead and planted a bunch of agaves from seed. I got eight different varieties of Oaxacan seeds. And in fact, I harvested a couple of different uh, agave and a uh, cucharillo set of seeds. And uh, so I'm growing them right here. And I'm really excited to watch them continue to grow and plant them around the property. Maybe I'll give some to some friends. Maybe I'll go into the agave growing business. Who knows? Probably not. So, you know, it's unbelievably cool to be able to go down to Oaxaca and not only drink this magnificent wild spirit, you know, but to be able to watch them making it in essentially the same way they did 400 years ago. I just think it's so cool. I feel so honored to be able to go down and do that. It's kind of like it's not only am I dealing with people of a different culture and of a different place, but almost like of a different time, you know. I think that's amazing. So if this kind of stirs within you what it did in me the first time I went to Oaxaca, I can't make any better recommendation than doing it yourself. There are a whole bunch of different Oaxaca and Mezcal Palenque companies. And, uh, you know, you can go down there. They'll take you around. You get to meet these folks, see exactly what they do, try some of their stuff. And, uh, you know, if uh, you also are making your way through here, San Miguel de Allende, my town in the uh, high desert mountains of central Mexico, shoot me a message. I'd love to meet you. Maybe we can have you here to the house for a tasting. Or maybe I could meet you at, at one of the uh, growing number of mezcal bars in town. In any case, thanks so much for watching. And as they say in Zapotec, Gishbe.